Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today, we're gonna tackle the daunting task of replacing the clutch on our 2007 Honda GL1800A, also known as the Honda Goldwing. Now, if your machine is starting to slip when you're leaving a stopped state, well, it's time to go ahead and take a look at that clutch because all those fiber discs that are in there, that means they're starting to break down and all those little pieces and particles are flowing around inside your engine and that's not very healthy for it. Now, I know this is a bit of a task, but you're gonna save a lot of money if you follow along with me and do this yourself. Now, as far as the parts go, I've already assembled those, but if you notice on the exploded diagrams, you have three different part numbers for your different fiber disc. All your metal discs, they're the same. Now, you don't wanna leave out your cover gasket as well as that retention nut and your exhaust crush washers because we will be dropping the entire exhaust system. All right guys, I've got all my parts assembled. So all I need to do now is open up my toolbox and don't worry, you can do this because I'm gonna walk with you step by step all the way through. Let's get going. Step number one, let's go ahead and soak all of our fiber plates. That way they'll be ready once we make it deep down inside that rear cover on the back side of the engine. So if you put these in dry, they will wear out almost immediately. Now if you forget to do this till you're actually ready for them, let them soak for a minimum of a half hour. All right, guys, as you can tell, the previous owner of this machine, I think he bought every single accessory that is available. So there will be certain steps that I'm going to be going through that you may not have to do on yours. One of the first things we need to do is go and drain the oil. But before we can get to that, looks like they've got a skid plate under there that needs to be removed first. As we go through this, pretty much everything that I do on one side will be replicated over on the other. Now, if there is a difference in between the two, I'll call that out as we go along. All right, looks like we're going to need to get our lower fairing off as well. And that's held in by five millimeter hex bolts. Now, keep in mind you've got a couple of different sizes as far as depths of the collars. So take note of that when you're pulling them out. Where they go back. This is all about taking your time and being gentle so you don't scratch up anything. guys these things are a little bit tricky one bolt up front drop the front edge down and then pull forward because the rear section is just held in place by these two tabs all right the same scenario over here 10 millimeter bolt here drop down pull forward and she should come out of place Now we can remove this cover. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that ain't Honda. <laughs> I think we've got enough room to leave those flaps connected and just swing it around like that. All right, let's go ahead and get our drain bolt, get the oil out of this thing. Now, if you need help doing just a simple oil change on yours, we have a video that shows you how to do that. As you can tell by the oil coming out of it, that was not done too long ago. Because that oil is uh, basically new, but it is what it is. That's probably enough. It's not critical that we get all the oil out. It's going to be below the level of the clutch cover, so we're good. Word of advice, 
go ahead and get out your torque wrench and get this torque back to spec. Because you do not want to forget that. All right, guys, unless you're working on a lift, you won't have to do this next step. I need to lift up the back end so I can drop down the center stand. Well, I told you this machine had just about every accessory mounted on it, as you can imagine. Now, dropping the exhaust, especially the muffler, should be pretty easy. Bolt back here, a couple of pinch bolts there, and then each side pulls off. But this one has a trailer hitch on it. So guess what? They've got a support bar that goes all the way to here. And that support bar is covering up the bolt that I need to get to. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of extra work before I can actually drop these down that hopefully you don't have to. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves while I do this. I mean, it's a nice setup, it's a nice kit, but just a little bit more work for me. There we go. Now that's just a 12 millimeter bolt back here. Two clamp bolts or six millimeter Allens. And you don't have to take these out, you just have to loosen them up. I think they need a little bit of silicone spray. What do y'all think? Let's see if she'll separate now. Same thing for the other side. Not quite as much clearance over here. It's tight on the other side. She's not symmetrical. Slight difference in mounting from one side to the other. Okay, now let's make a bit, bunch of noise. Now it drops out. <laughs> Piece of cake. We'll go ahead and loosen these up just to make it easier to break them loose up front. off the whole bracket just to get this one bottom bolt nerving that it moves up much there now we got some wiggle room same game on the other side Funny, this side over here, it'll clear without taking off the bracket or that uh, engine guard. Oh yeah, these panels have to come off. We're almost there, I promise. <laughs> there we go. careful when you're got it at this point because there's still a couple of O2 sensors we need to unplug. All right guys we've got the exhaust drop down but I'm supporting it with this lift. Now the connections for the O2 sensors are way up behind here. I mean you can go through the pain of taking out the seat and the shelf and whatnot and getting that cover off or what I'm going to do is just leave it supported is this is a long wire. I've got it disconnected as far as any zip ties where it's got a little bit of wiggle room. And at this point, we can get those four to five turns out without damaging the wires, but you do not want to have it just hang by the wires because, well, O2 sensors are kind of expensive. So just be careful here. There. 
Just remember when you go to reinstall them, go ahead and pre-twist the wire about three or four turns, maybe five, and then it'll go back in, lock down at a relaxed state. I think we're gonna have to go ahead and split that to get it out from under it. Easy peasy. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get the coolant reservoir removed. I checked this level before we started, and it was just about empty. So I don't think we're going to need to extract any fluid out of it. You've got two lines, one up at the top, then one over to the side. Okay. Let's see if we can get this one to break loose. And remember, this is plastic. I mean, we will sell you a new one, but try not to break it. There we go. Could have left that hose on, actually. That was just a vent over the side. All right, guys, so we are in here now because this is the, the clutch cover. And we basically have 11 bolts holding it in place. And then the clutch is going to be on the other side of that. Now, if yours is really dirty, you want to go ahead and wipe things down the best you can because we're about to open up the engine. These are all 10 millimeters. Top one is not a lot of clearance. I think we can do that one with an extension. All right, guys, this isn't absolutely necessary, but so y'all can see what I'm actually doing, I'm going to go ahead and remove the alternator. Plus, that gives me a little bit more working room, and you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Make sure you disconnect your battery if you're going to take yours out. Now, you may be asking yourself, why do I go through all this? If you take it to a dealership, this, this job's going to cost in between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars. That's why. Now you can see what I'm doing. And since we've got this out of the way, let's get some of that crap off of it. I've got four down. That means I got seven to go, according to my super fantastic math skills. This is when I wish I'd already bought a small air ratchet, 90 degrees. That's 11. Let's see if we can get her to release. There's a little rubber O-ring up top that I was trying to hook, but I dropped. But that will be very important when it comes time to put it back together. There we go. Yeah, there's an O-ring that goes right there. There she was. Probably need to go ahead and replace that. That's feeling pretty flat. All right, guys, we've got a cover off, and now we need to reach in here and remove what they call a stopper ring, which is basically a very large circlip. Once we get out the stopper ring, then you can lift out the lifter plate. Now, it may want to catch if it gets a little off-centered, but take your time. It will remove. Next, we need to remove the main clutch nut, which is a 32 millimeter. So hopefully... And unstake it. Hopefully that's enough. Let's see what we got. Need to go ahead and shift the machine into any gear other than neutral. And then have somebody hold on the brakes. Alright, so 
and there's our nut washer and our hub spring and then there's a little trim ring right here now the business end all right guys here's the glamorous part of working on motorcycles or any engine for that matter and that's going to be removing the gasket material and anyone that's done any type of work on a honda you know that these green gaskets are pretty tough uh, what i can tell you is to use the scraper but do so at a low angle have some contact cleaner available to help break this down and be patient because if you gouge into this well guess what chances are you're going to have a leak so take your time go ahead and get all this material off now i know my editor is going to make it look like this all takes about five minutes no it takes forever these green gaskets from honda they're notorious i mean they're just really difficult to take off but hey but they never leak or hardly ever leak i don't want to use the word never All right, guys, we've got that cover cleaned up as well as the casing on the back of the engine. Wasn't that a lot of fun, but do take your time, get all of that off. That way you won't have a leak. And believe me, you don't want to go back and have to do this a second time. But now we can address the clutch pack itself. So let's start by getting off the stopper ring and then the spring below it. Then we can remove the pressure plate. Now, as you're doing this, lay them out in the same configuration as you're pulling them off. Because they are, or several pieces are directional, especially that one. All right, we've got a lifter plate out, and we're going to lift out the clutch piston and pressure plate together. And they're basically held together by an O-ring on the inside. Be careful doing this. You're just trying to fight an O-ring, but you don't want to damage any of these surfaces. So be gentle if yours is trying to hold together like mine is. There we go. Now, let's we'll start pulling our plates. Now granted, this clutch is in really good shape, honestly, but if it were not, the telltale signs would be the worn down fiber sections, as well as the metal plates having a blue sheen to them. Oh, that one's got a little bit of abnormal wear on it. See the discoloration that was starting? Nothing too traumatic though. Same thing on that. I would imagine that would had a bit of a shake to it when you release the clutch lever. down to yep the clip wire flip it over and you can see the tip of it right here we're going to push that through it's going to spring it see well they want you to put a new one in now All right, guys, let's continue. Spring and then one last plate back at the back. All right, well, there she is. Let's get this cleaned up and start putting it back together. All right, guys, I got it cleaned up. The O-ring's in place. Now let's start putting the clutch pack together. All right, first let's get in our spring seat and that's basically just the flat washer 
than the, the jutter spring. We want the beveled edge facing in. Now we bring in one of two oddball plates that we have. Then one of our steel plates. Now we got a new wire clip. We put in the first end, then feed it around, getting it inside the groove, and then get the second one pushed in. It isn't that tough to do, just take your time, do it section by section, push down on the plate, then feed the wire into the groove. Now we can start stacking the rest of our plates. Now you notice when you ordered yours, you had three different types of fibers. That first fiber, of course, is the smaller edge here, but your last one is different as well. Now if you can pick up the difference with uh, just using your eyes, Congratulations, because they all look exactly the same to me. But that last disc is different, and the way you differentiate it is the main section, they're all black on this one area. That one oddball is green, and that's going to be your last disc. So let's go. And it's just like any other clutch pack. We're just alternating in between fiber and the steel plates. And our oddball. Now, remember, there is an O-ring down in here, so we want to make sure it's lubed up before we continue. Now we have our clutch piston, which is this section down in there, and the pressure plate. They're still together from when we took it apart. I'm going to leave it that way and just put them together as an assembly, but we want to make sure that these protrusions are lined up with those notches. So we need to be about right there. There we go. Now we've got our lifter plate and we want these tabs to align over these three sections of holes. Like that. Then we've got our spring bevel edge going down. And then finally our retaining clip. Uh, it's laid inside, but now we need to push it down into the groove. And make very sure that you've got it all the way in the groove, all the way around. All right, guys, last, let's get our fiber disc just somewhat aligned. I mean, there's, it's impossible to do this outside the vehicle completely accurate. You just want it in the ballpark. That way there's a minimal amount of shifting around that we need to do to get it to go back in. Well, guess what, kids? It's time to get this mounted back inside the machine. Uh, do check to make sure that that other washer is in there. Very important. Now here's the part where you need to be a little bit patient because it can be a little bit tricky getting each one of these plates into the groove. When you get it about to the halfway point, sometimes it'll catch because it may be just a little bit out of alignment on the splines. All the plates go in to the long ones, and but that last plate, plate C, gets shifted over one into that short section. All right, next, let's get our spring seat concave facing out, spring, spring guide, washer, and our new retaining nut. Just going to seat it all right guys we're going to put it back in gear
pulled the brakes, and then we're going to torque it to 94 foot-pounds. Trick is having enough room to move. All right, guys, let's go. <coughs> All right, there it is. All right, with that torqued, what we need to do now is bring it around where we can stake it. So I've got it back in neutral. We're kind of aiming toward a six or seven and o'clock angle to where I can get a punch and hit it from the side to get it staked. Now let's get our lifter plate in. Now let's get in our stopper ring. Now we're just checking to make sure it's seated all the way around. Looks like we've got it. And we've already got our dowels in place. But remember, there is an O-ring that we are replacing up top. Now, let's go ahead and seal this thing up. That's the way I like it. Let's start getting some bolts back in here. Just going around one more time to make sure everybody's seated. Because remember, you are compressing a gasket. All right, guys, that feels like a functioning clutch to me. Well, listen, that's going to wrap it up for this video, although I still have quite a bit of work to do before I can call this project finished. Now, it's pretty much just the reverse order of everything I did as far as getting the alternator and the exhaust system back on. Well, listen, if you need these parts or any other parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. If you have any questions or comments about this video, Leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer. And hey, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified and you'll see whatever I'm working on next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Parkzilla. We will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.